We've all had tough days at the office, but some actors dedicated to giving it their all took work a few steps too far. Though these critically acclaimed, often award-winning performances are a delight to watch, the experience of preparing for and recovering from these roles did a number on the actors involved and left a lasting impression, not always for the positive. Here are several actors who went the extra mile for their craft. Charlie Hunman, American TV and Movies Charlie Hunman has played everything from a soccer hooligan to a giant robot pilot, and he's known for his extraordinarily convincing American accent, making him one of a handful of chameleon-like British actors able to convincingly pass as American in his various roles. Years of living in the States, however, took their toll on Hanman's actual real-life accent, and when he appeared on TV in 2013 to plug a movie on Conan, he spoke with a bizarre amalgamation of various American dialects that prompted confusion and mockery, especially in Hanman's native UK. Hunnam spoke about this in 2017 when he admitted that his accent, or lack thereof, had gotten so bad that when he signed on to star in King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, he had to hire a dialect coach to relearn how to speak with an English accent. Adrian Brody, the Pianist Though Brody's physical transformation for 2002's The Pianist is obvious, the actor has also discussed the enormous mental and emotional strain of portraying a Holocaust survivor which earned him the Academy Award for Best Actor in 2003. To prepare for the role, Brody gave up his apartment, sold his car, disconnected his phones, and moved to Europe. I hope that's a compliment. But it was the emotional effect of intense hunger during his extreme crash diet that he found the most surprising and difficult challenge to deal with. Brody told the BBC, I've experienced loss, I've experienced sadness in my life, but I didn't know the desperation that comes with hunger. There were moments when he wasn't sure he would get out of the experience with his sanity intact, saying it took a year and a half to, quote, settle back into things. Isabella Zani, Possession any horror buff knows the subway scene in Anja Zulowski's 1981 Possession to be one of the most horrifyingly shocking moments of body horror ever to grace the silver screen. And if you haven't seen the film, buckle up. You're in for a treat. Isabella Jani won a Caesar Award for her performance, but the intense physical and emotional demands of the role made for an extremely difficult repercussion. Ajani later told the French magazine that it took her years of therapy to get Anna out of her system and that she would never again attempt another role like it. Bob Hoskins, who framed Roger Rabbit. One of late British actor Bob Hoskins' most famous roles was that of alcoholic LA gumshoe Eddie Vallant in the film Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Hoskins had to spend several hours a day for eight months talking to and acting alongside cartoon characters who weren't really there. Hoskins would later note that he learned how to hallucinate that Roger and the other characters were actually there to cope with the dissonance of constantly hearing their voices but never seeing them while filming. When shooting finally ended, Hoskins found himself constantly talking to himself and even hallucinating that Roger was sitting in the same room for months afterwards, prompting his doctor to advise him to take a much-needed break from acting. Hugh Laurie, House during the casting process of House, the producers famously explained that they wanted a quintessential American actor to play Dr. House shortly before hiring British actor Hugh Laurie. Always. I, and I think there's no way around that. I think you have to. I, I think it, Did you it, get it, nervous it, before? Were you nervous? You would not. No, you're not nervous. Laurie apparently got the role because his American accent on his audition tape was so convincing, nobody realized he was British. The director of the pilot even pointed to the tape and said, See, this is what I want, an American guy. Lori also went for it when it came to walking with a limp to portray the cane using house. So much so that the actress still walked with the limp in 2015 after eight straight years of pretending to have one on set. Lori also reportedly attempted to ease the load in his leg by occasionally switching the leg with the limp, something he claims nobody ever noticed or called them on during filming, or in the years since the show ended. Apparently, Laurie's acting is so good, he can make people overlook both his Britishness and that he didn't always limp with the same leg despite that being a defining aspect of the character. Christopher McDonald, Happy Gilmore Christopher McDonald isn't exactly a household name, but his performance in Happy Gilmore is so memorable that generations of filmgoers can't look at a picture of his face without blurting out, Hey, it's Shooter McGavin! 
That's just one role out of many in a solid career, but it looks like McDonald doesn't mind being forever associated with a hot-headed golf pro. McDonald told the AV Club that he took the role basically because he enjoyed playing golf and won a tournament shortly after being offered the script. He was hesitant at first, saying he wasn't eager to get back on a film set after shooting two movies back to back, but being paid to play golf and hang out with Adam Sandler seemed like a pretty sweet deal. According to McDonald, his golf game got sick. Since he played for five hours a day, six days a week while filming, and as an added bonus, now that he's synonymous with Shooter McCabin, he basically gets to play golf for free for the rest of his life. Janet Lee, Psycho Academy Award-winning actress Janet Lee is known mainly for one role, playing the character who gets stabbed to death in the shower early on in Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho. The scene terrified millions, including Lee. After filming wrapped up, she never felt comfortable in the shower again. In interviews, Lee noted that she stopped taking showers after watching the scene. On the rare occasion she had to take a shower, she would only use it briefly while staring directly at the door, and she wouldn't even draw the shower curtain. James Cromwell, Babe James Cromwell is the kind of actor whose appearance is so distinctive, most people know his face, but not his name. He scored one of his few leading roles in 1995's Babe, in which he was upstaged by a talking pig. Well, the purpose of playing, as Shakespeare said, is to hold the mirror up to nature, so I hope that... But it all worked out, given that he was not only a massive hit, but it changed Cromwell's life, turning him from a guy who occasionally flirted with vegetarianism into a vegan. Cromwell has called the experience of making a film a turning point in his life, recalling in an interview with Vice that he was profoundly affected by seeing a small piglet react to being put onto a patch of grass. He said, quote, When that little pig was put down on that big pitch, and saw the blue sky and green grass and the seed, that pig just took off and said, I don't want any part of this, I'm out. Cromwell has been an ardent supporter of animal rights ever since, especially pigs, which understandably now have a small place in his heart thanks to Babe and its sequel, Babe 2, A Pig in the City. Colin Firth, The King's Speech Colin Firth plays the future king of England, George VI, in the Oscar-winning The King's Speech and has to give a number of speeches in addition to a number of other royal duties. The film has a villain of sorts in the form of a near debilitating stammer that ruins nearly every speech George gives until he hires a vocal coach. Firth himself also worked closely with a voice coach and watched recordings of George speaking to better emulate both his vocal shortcomings as well as his physical mannerisms and nervous tics and stammering. Firth immersed himself so deep in the role that he admitted in an interview that he still occasionally lapsed into the stammer when speaking casually, even briefly stammering during the interview itself. It's worth noting that it, this happened in May of 2011, a full eight months after the film premiered in September of the previous year. Judging by how flawlessly enunciated every syllable in Kingsman, The Secret Service while taking down thugs with an umbrella in 2014, it looks like Firth has since gotten over the stammer. Keith Ledger, The Dark Knight Ledger's performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight was so chilling that it landed him an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Tragically, it was a posthumous award as Ledger had died of an accidental overdose in January 2008. Kill the Batman. In the years that followed his premature death, rumors swirled that the preparation of the dark role had contributed to Ledger's demise. Before filming began, Ledger put himself in a strict isolation, keeping a diary of disturbing images to enter the realm of a psychopath. He sometimes only slept two hours a night while filming, according to November 2007 interview with the New York Times. It was a mixture of painkillers, anti-anxiety, drugs, and sleeping pills that ultimately caused Ledger's death just two months later. Thanks for watching, subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus check out all the cool stuff we know you love to.